I found this on the web for who is the top ranked recruit in the country. Check it out. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Uncloud Recruit, where we get reviews from former student athletes about their experience at their universities. Let go. Hello everyone, back on another episode of Uncloud Recruit. We're on episode eight. We got a real, real special guest today. Uh, tell us your name and where you're from. Um, Dominic DiCaprio. Uh, I'm from South Florida, but uh, I live in Houston right now. Okay. Um, so I know you played baseball. Tell me, you know, when did you start playing ball and uh, what age was that? And how, when did you know you were going to be good? Man, uh, I started probably t-ball five years old. Um, uh, my dad was coaching me and, you know, I was just playing. Um, I guess when I knew I was like really good and I had potential in the sport was probably when I hit 14. Um, Cause I played football and baseball my whole life until 14. But then when I hit 14, um, I reached a certain level and, you know, was blessed to play for the national team when I was 14. Um, so I kind of knew I had a, a path in baseball and kind of just give up football. So that's when I kind of really stuck full time. But uh, when I first took, picked up the bat, I guess you could say it was five. So. Okay, so um, when did the recruiting process, you know, take off for you? When did you start getting, like, college exposure and stuff like that? Okay, um, yeah, I would say I would say right after right after I, I finished with the national team at 14, you know, and in the freshman year, uh, I remember my first letter was from Oregon, and I was like, man, it's crazy. Like, <laughs> it, it start, it's starting to happen. But, um, yeah, that's when I probably got my first notice, um, and, and that's when it started to kick off. Um, and then, you know, by end of sophomore year, I uh, had some serious interest and then kind of went from there, so. Okay, so like, Don, so tell me, so I know like baseball recruiting, is it is it different than football recruiting? I mean, can you explain that, like how it's different? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's very different as far as the looks you get. So football, I mean, you can get, you can get 60, 60 looks, 60 different schools because they got 60 full ride scholarships. Yeah. But for baseball, you got 11.7. So these schools are more picky as to when, when they're throwing out scholarships, how much money they're throwing at kids. Um, so, you know, football, somebody could have 20 offers. Baseball, if you have five offers at one time out on the table, then you're, you know, top, top level. So it's not like offers were just coming left and right. It was kind of me um, picking where I wanted like what schools I wanted to look at and then kind of reaching out to coaches saying, Hey, I'm going to be playing at this tournament, this tournament, um, come check me out. And, and that's kind of how it started. Plus I was with a, a good select team um, that traveled around that was pretty reputable. So like colleges would just come see us as well. So that's kind of how all that, all that went, went on, but it's definitely way different. Wow. So having like 10, 15 offers, you know, that that's kind of unheard of. And if you do, it's like that doesn't, yeah, that does not happen. Yeah. You, see, like most of the time, you know, which was my case, um, well, that was my second offer, but really most of the time you, you commit on your first offer, second offer, depending on, you know, the school. You might get some low-level schools, throw you some 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 scholarships out there um, if you're a big-time player, but, um, you know, for the most part, those SEC, ACC schools, um, if they throw you an offer, you're probably, you're probably going to commit um, for the most part because you're not going to get that too many, too many times. So... So when you're going through this process, were you like a sophomore year or what year was you in when you were 14? You're probably about, like, you're about to come. So up. when I finished, when I finished with the national team at 14, I was entering my, so that was the summer going into my freshman year. Okay. Um, after my freshman year, um, I, you know, was blessed to play varsity as a freshman, got a lot of exposure, you know, did, did fairly well. And that's when I started taking some visits. So like my first visit was Miami. Um, you know, I, di I didn't want to stay in Florida. That was just something personal for me because I played with literally everybody that went to all the colleges in Florida. So I kind of wanted to get a new environment, new style of play, things like that. Uh, so I didn't really entertain those the Florida schools too much. But uh, my first serious interest in offer was uh, was LSU. And that's where I originally committed um, as a as a sophomore. Um, and then, you know, I was I was committed to them for about two years. Um, and then, you know, some different things happened. We can get into that later if you want. But uh you know, some different things happened with that, and, and it led me to Rice. Um, and so, I mean, I couldn't be more blessed to, to have that opportunity now looking back, so. 
Okay. So being a Florida guy from South Florida, Miami, the University of Florida, that was out that was out the door, FIU, that was all those schools. See, it, it's not so much that it was out the door because I didn't want to go to the program. It was more because my select team, every single kid and every single kid around the surrounding areas were going to Miami, Florida, FSU, UCF. So it was kind of like I want to, you know, be a little different as far as I want to go to an LSU or a Vanderbilt or this one or that one. I don't want to just stay in Florida. Uh, so that's kind of how that, that happened. It's not so much that I didn't think they were good programs. It's just I want to be do something different. You kind of wanted to expand your horizon a little bit, just get out of Florida. It, it, exactly, exactly. I wanted to just see, you know, Texas has different style of baseball. California has got a different style of baseball. The Northeast got a different style of baseball. So, you know, South Florida, you get a – you know, you get you have a very, very heavy, heavy like Hispanic culture down there. So you're getting that that Caribbean of style of play, that South American style of play, as opposed to you go to Texas, you go to California, you might get a little different different style. So and with um, it's great that you mentioned that. So with that, with the different playing styles, would you say South Florida is probably one of the top, you know, recruiting grounds for like you know the next level in the pros? I mean, obviously you got the Dominican Republic and all these other different, you know cultures and countries close by South Florida, would you say that South Florida produces some of the best baseball players? Yeah, so definitely. I mean, um, the three three major, major major spots, very similar to football, is, you know, South Florida, Texas, and California. You know, you, you got talent everywhere, don't get me wrong, but those three those three are the hubs of, 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 of talent. And what I tell people a lot that I've seen is the difference between Florida talent and Texas talent or California talent Florida talent super raw, like meaning like not very, not very pop it's polished, but not as polished like as as Texas and California players. They might not have as much athletic ability, as much speed, things like that, power, but they're very polished and very refined in their game. And and I think that comes from with me too personally, a lot of South Florida players play both sports growing up. Um and and you know, a lot of people that I've met in Texas. Um, and then around the country, they stick with baseball and they never played football. They never played a different sport. So they're very, very um, refined in what they uh, – in the sport that they play, you know. I got you. So it sounds like, Dom, you're in high school. You're committed to LSU for two years. Some things happen. Um, if you want to talk about that, that's fine. If you don't – but somehow you ended up at Rice. You decided Rice mm -hmm. was the way to go. What, what are some of the uh, deciding factors that led you to Rice? Um, so – to touch on the LSU situation just a little bit, I was committed there for a couple of years. And uh, when I was when I was about to not about to sign, but maybe about six months out um, going into my my senior year, um, the recruiting class before me uh, had a lot of guys that were supposed to be drafted out of high school, um, like a lot of baseball players of that, that level are. And they ended up having some injuries. So they came a year early and, um, you know, they didn't account for that in the scholarships, things like that. So um, the money wasn't going to be there. Because like I mentioned earlier, it's 11.7. So you got to very, very carefully plan out those scholarships. So, you know, the, the money wasn't going to be there that they said was going to be because of the, the scholarships. But actually, the LSU coach um, reached out to a bunch of schools for me personally, um, Rice being one of them, and, uh, and kind of got me that scholarship. You know, from, from, what he, from what I was told, he just basically called all the schools outside of the SEC and, and just, you know, said, I got this guy, I don't want him in the SEC, but, you know, you guys could use him. And that's, and I picked Rice based on the combination of academics and athletics because I knew that sports isn't forever. So, you know, to have a degree like Rice, uh, you know, is, is pretty big. So, Yeah, that's crazy that you said that. I've never heard – you know, I talked to a lot of guys about the recruiting process. I never really heard where a coach would just call up another coach, you know, at the major, you know, Division One level like that and say, pass a guy along, you know. Just never heard of this. I guess maybe See, yeah. it's just no. It's a rare. It's a rare thing, man. I'm I'm gonna tell you. And and the coach for LSU, uh, Paul Maneri, uh, is so much respect for him for doing that because I, I definitely wouldn't you know be where I'm at, especially in Houston where I'm at. Um, if uh if it wasn't for that, and and it's actually ironic that our first two years, freshman and sophomore year at Rice, we ended up playing them in in the regionals at LSU. Um, and I got to see him twice, and and it was kind of a ironic experience how all that led to playing them you know towards the end of the year so everything came back 360 man it's like that's why you don't know full circle man just, that's crazy yep, so, you, so so you you choose rice um you said because of academics and you know athletics obviously 
Mm-hmm. So you're on campus as a freshman right now. What's going through your head? I mean, you're away from home. You're a South, you're a South Florida guy. You're in Texas and you're used to it. So can you talk me through that process of you know going to Rice in the first couple of years? Yeah, definitely. So, um, I mean, when I when I showed up as a freshman, uh, you know, as anybody who has went to Rice and played athletics, uh, you're kind of the outsider as an athlete. Um, you know, I would say 90% of the students have perfect SATs and ACTs and GPAs. So, you know, showing up is kind of a culture shock. You got people from everywhere all over the world, not just the United States. So that was an adjustment and uh, they make you live on campus. So just mingling with everybody um, was an adjustment, but, you know, you come to respect, you know, you put in a certain amount of time in athletics, they put in a certain amount of time in academics and and that's what got them there. So, um, you know, it, it was kind of it was kind of that process, but once you know, once once I got adjusted to that, then um, everything was good. And and athletic wise, um, you know, I, I had a little bit of a wake up call as far as not so much my my I wasn't up to par with my skills. More like I need to get in shape. I need to get my body to be a D one player. You know, I was just more athletically talented than most of the kids in high school. But now that catches up to you. You know what I mean? So. Uh, my first year as a freshman, I didn't catch. I only DH'd. Um, and that was because, you know, I wasn't in tip-top shape. So, you know, it was a wake-up call. And um, after after my freshman year, even after starting every game, um, and I'll never forget this, and I'll never respect anybody more for telling me this, but, you know, after my freshman year, my coach looked me in my eye on the way back from LSU and said, you know, you're not going to play for me next year if you don't come back in shape. So you could either, you know, transfer to a JUCO or, or, or come back in shape. and wasn't because of my talent. It wasn't because of my play, because I, I played great. It was because he wanted more from me. And, and you know, I took that to the heart and kind of ran with that and had a successful sophomore year and, and so on. So, Okay. So you, your coach challenged you, like, hey, man, you got to get in shape. You got to, you know, flip things around or you're not going to be here next year or whatever. Because like, I know baseball is kind of cutthroat. I mean, when I was at Arkansas, man, we would always see guys coming in and out. And so can you talk about how, like, how cutthroat baseball can be sometimes like that? Yeah, uh, for sure. I mean, you know, co- my coach, um, Coach Wayne Graham, you know, he's he's regarded as a top three coach of all time in college baseball. You know, he's got the second most wins ever. So pretty much anything that comes out of his mouth, you got to respect just from his, his background. So, you know, when he said that to me, I didn't look at him as, you know, you're this and that, you're this and that. I looked at it as, okay, like he wants more. He wouldn't be telling me that if he didn't think I had more in me, you know. Even after coming off a year, I mean, I made freshman all conference, all that, all that thing. It's not, it wasn't my play. Like I said, it was, he saw something in me. And so during that summer, I got a call. They brought somebody, they brought another catcher in to challenge me because if I didn't come back, then, you know, he was going to start. And so, you know, when I, when I heard that, I was, you know, just pretty much, if I can't beat him out, how am I going to even think about playing pro baseball at some point? So, you know, just different challenges like that, you know, they're ready to replace you in a heartbeat. And, and that's really any, that's really any sport, to be honest with you. Um, you know, especially if, if you get hurt or if you, if you don't perform up to par for, you know, a certain amount of length of time, depending on who you are, you know, you're replaced. And if your replacement comes in and, and balls out, <laughs> you, you're probably, you're probably, yeah, you probably better look for another school. So, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of people in my shoes, might have might have transferred but you know I, I kind of just looked at it as like you know he wants the best from me and and I came back and you know didn't didn't give it up so yeah man so you fought through the adversity with that so you're back in your sophomore year you know what what, what goes through that year what goes on that year you know, how was summer man that was man man the summer the summer the summer going into my sophomore year was the hardest 72 days of my entire life um uh, <laughs> To be honest, I, I I literally lost 38 pounds in 72 days, did nothing but, you know, eat, sleep, and train, you know, me and my pops just all summer, didn't play summer baseball like most college players do. Um, I told my coach, I need to go get in shape, and I, I came back, you know, ready to go, and, and, it, and it paid off, man. I mean, I finished, finished the year, team MVP, captain, um, you know, 30th in the nation in hits, things like that, so... You know, I, I, I did my thing, but that was based on um, me taking what my coach said to heart and then um, and then applying that, you know, taking action with it and, and you know, just coming back because I wanted to be better for my team, not just myself. So, um, you know, and then after that, it was it was all it was all up from there. So. OK, so 
your junior your senior year, you know, tell me about that because I know you hit it, you hit a little bit more adversity going through adversity going through your junior senior. Year. So what happened mm-hmm. in those two years? You know? Um, man, uh, injuries. But to sum it up, but uh, my junior year uh, came back from um, playing in the summer uh, in a league, Cape Cod baseball league is uh you know one of the one of the top actually the top you know baseball league and I played a lot and when I came back um you know I was I was kind of feeling you know a little worn out but just you know just kept going and uh when I when I hit my junior year or my junior spring when the season started um I started off good and then all of a sudden just broke my hand um swinging a bat uh right in my my handmade bone had to have surgery um, so I was out for about two months, um, and then I came back, man. Actually, and my first game back after two months, I had a I had a bomb, a double, uh, all that. So I was I was I was killing it. And two games later, tore my shoulder um, on a slide. So that kind of that kind of ended that season for me. Tried to get a red shirt, couldn't. Um, so I came back from my senior year after rehabbing. Um, senior year broke my back twice, um, two stretch fractures. Uh, just, just overuse, over swinging. Um, just, I guess the wear, the wear with all the baseball. And then, uh, and then after that, um, I kind of, you know, had a couple of chances to sign professionally, but it, it was to the point where it was either, you know, start my working career or, you know, see if I can push through um, and sacrifice, you know, all these job opportunities just to go play. So I kind of looked myself in the mirror and was like, let's, let's hang it up. So that's, that's kind of how my last two years ended, but got no regrets whatsoever with that. Yeah, man, I can relate to it, man. Like the same thing with me, man. My last two years, man, I had a lot of injuries, man. Uh, torn ACL, dislocated elbow. Um, yep. So a lot of injuries, man. And, you know, my last season this past season, I told myself, I was like, hey, look, you know, you can chase the NFL. I had a couple of teams looking at me like the Green Bay Packers as well. And – right. Just, I would say, man, I want to get in corporate America and start making a difference, making a change. My exactly. Um, and so I feel it, bro. I can understand it's hard, man, because you, growing up as a kid, all you want to do is chase the dream, the pros, this and that, the money, this and mm-hmm. that. And then when you're so close and you really feel like you've been, because you've been around guys, a lot of talented guys, talented guys. I know you know guys that are probably on the MLB or whatever. Oh, like, yeah. And yeah. all that. So the same thing with me. I know a ton of guys in the league, and it's hard. It's a hard decision to look yourself in the mirror and say, hey, I think it's time to give it up and you know move on. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously you went to Rice, so how can you know? Obviously you were thinking about the uh, end goal in mind when you chose Rice because Rice is very prestigious and the name itself is just a brand. Can you talk about that about you know making that right decision from the get go about academics? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, just just building off what you just said. I mean, you know, when I looked myself in the mirror, I was like. I just graduated with a Rice degree. You know, it's never going to be more valuable than it is right now, fresh out of college. Um, you know, my family su- supported this dream, you know, since I was five. And now it's time to, you know, start making money and start, like, you know, fiending for myself. I mean, I be- I was doing that in college because I had my scholarship. But at the same time, you know, if I ever needed anything, I would have a parent to call. And I, I was tired of doing that. And I was and I was tired of, of – um, I guess, asking other people for things. Um, and so I, I was like, you know, let me use this rice degree. Let me get a, a nice job and let me start my career. Um, I'm not defined by baseball, just like you're not defined by football. And, and you're defined by, you know, how you go about life and, and, and what's in your mind and your heart. So, you know, that's kind of what I really came to the realization. If, if people don't want to, you know, stay in a friendship or a relationship or this or that because I don't play baseball anymore, then you know that's their loss so be it so um that's kind of what I really look because for for a while that was a struggle it's like I got all these baseball friends I got this and that um and and when I really realized you know that doesn't matter you know let's let's just let's just go let's just go after you know a career and and you know keep making money so I can have generations of, of wealth instead of you know just making myself money in baseball and calling it a day you know so Man, I feel I feel that same struggle, man. Because once I hung it up, man, uh, I had a couple of people switch it up, switch up on me, man. You know, people just don't want to be around because it's not all about football. And oh, you went to this school, you associated with this, and at times you go through that transition. Like, man, I miss it. I miss the guys. You know, this. I miss all the things that come along with being a Division One athlete. 
And I definitely feel your struggle when it comes to that. People change up, man. They switch up. They're like, oh, well, you're not on the team or this and that, or you're not in the pros, you're not in the league, you're, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. And you see your buddies and people you know doing those things. And sometimes you can feel kind of awkward about, like, man, did I make the right decision? But, you know, you going to Rice and getting your degree, man, it sounds like things are going to be looking up for you. So I know, Don, we both met, you know, working for the Texans. We both did an internship there. Can you talk about mm-hmm. that experience? And, uh, you know, going through that, you know, was that – can you talk about working for the Texans a little bit? Yeah, definitely. I mean, <laughs> we, we we didn't have the best time in the world. I know <laughs> that, being, being the movers and all that. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I would, t- I would say one thing. The Texans organization is a high class organization. It's nothing, nothing on them. I just think what we were doing, um, and in the sports world, um, I wasn't particularly drawn to. I mean, for everybody watching, whoever doesn't know, uh, we were basically a part of a team that put together the Texas Bowl, um, that is an NRG stadium every year. And so we just had weekly and daily things that we had to do. Um, but for the most part, it was just a bunch of tedious moving things around, uh, cutting paper, uh, stacking boxes. And, and I just saw a lot more for myself than that. Um, and, you know, I went to Rice with a degree in sport management, but I knew that just because I got a sport management degree doesn't mean I had to stay in sports. Um, and so, you know, that experience was, it was good to experience it because it, it opened my mind to, I love sports, but I don't want to be in the sports world as a, as a business professional. If I was a player, that's different. But if, <laughs> but if I'm a if I'm gonna be working for the team, carrying boxes to storage every day, you know, I, I, I'm not gonna enjoy my life. And I feel like if you're gonna be successful at something, you have to enjoy doing it because that's what you're gonna put the time into. So if I if I'm just sitting there not enjoying my life, I'm not gonna be as successful at it because I'm not gonna put the effort into it. And so that's kind of how I looked at it, and that's kind of what I took away from that experience. Gotcha. So you know, you had a you had a really uh, successful career in my eyes at uh, Rice, and you got a degree um, at a prestigious school. And if Rice speaks for itself, so you know you make you make you're making that transition. You know, from being a student athlete. So what's next for you? What are you up to now? And what's next for Dom in the next couple uh, coming years? Yeah. Um, so actually, I've been uh, working with Rider uh, Systems. Uh, it's a transportation and logistics company. I'm sure y'all have seen the big white white rider trucks driving around. Um, and uh, so basically, um, you know, I, I'm about to come up on one year with the company. Um, and once you hit one year with the company, you can kind of branch off to any division you want, um, any any department you want, uh, sales, logistics, uh, operations. So right now, you know, um, you know, I've been talking to a couple of, you know, senior management people in the company and, and you know, I'm thinking about, you know, they want me to go the sales route and, and, and try to get new business for the company. So, you know, um, within the next coming months, uh, I could be in Houston, I could be in New York, I could be in California. So um, it's pretty much um, up to the, the job openings and, and wherever, you know, the company pulls me. And then, you know, my ultimate goal is to, to end up in corporate in South Florida where, where you're at. So that's where the headquarters are. And uh, that's definitely a goal to be a VP or a president of a division one day or um, or start my own business. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm really into just, uh, you know, real estate and investing and things like that on the side as well. Um, so really any anywhere there's money uh, and anywhere there's there's places to make money, um, that's where I'm looking and, and, you know, just starting a whole new I guess chapter because you got to close the page on the athletic career and open up, open up the page on the, the business careers. Man. And everything you just said, Dom is like, I'm going through those stages too. Like I'm working for a company down here in South Florida and I'm about to go out and work be in sales as well. So I know the benefit mm-hmm. sides of that. Uh, and, you know, just everything you just said, the real estate, the investing, you know, all the time, you know, closing that chapter of being a student athlete, I think that's important because a lot of guys, they never close it and it just hangs on with them yep. for their life and they never know how to let it go. Uh, and they never really took academics seriously either. So now that they're in a situation where they're in the real world and football or baseball or whatever can't save them, they can't be that crutch. They don't know how to survive. They don't know how to do other things. It's just, it's sad, but man, it sounds like your life is headed up in a positive direction. You learned a lot from you know Rice University and you did everything you were supposed to do. Um, no regrets, and like I said, man, we appreciate you hopping on the show and uh, coming on and sharing your story, man. It's awesome to hear 
another side of, you know, a different sport because everybody on this channel has been football or basketball or whatever. So just to hear get a baseball guy and give you a perspective of going to a prestigious university, I, I really appreciate it, man. I really do. I really, really yeah, do. Yeah, man. Thanks for thanks for having me. It was fun, fun chatting for sure. For sure, bro. Let me close it out real quick. Yeah, man, that's it, man. Cool. Good deal. I'll, I, I, that was that was a good, uh, good little interview there. Yeah, bro. Appreciate it, man. Like, dang. So you, uh, you there? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. You cut out for a second. You're good. My bad. Yeah, man. Appreciate you doing that, man. For real, man. So I've just been starting that, man. And is it on YouTube? Yeah, uh, I'm gonna put it on YouTube eventually. I gotta edit it, so I'll send you the link and stuff so you can uh, check it out and whatnot. So, well, yeah. You said you.